think a few days in Nairobi exploring the town as well. <laughs> so yeah, I already got a visa for Nairobi, free of charge, and I was supposed to be at, waiting for a hotel as well. So this is my room, which I got it again for free. I'll be staying here for uh, three nights as well. So you get it here, top floor, fourth floor, a bed, nice, clean, which is what you want, and a bathroom as well. So I'm using an Uber in Nairobi, and they do have Uber, and they even have like a motorcycle, a bunch of Uber. So I had my first motorcycle Uber ride, Boda Boda. Yeah, it was uh, the receptionist who who was waiting together with me at my hotel was pretty scared with my idea going with Boda Boda because uh, they drive recklessly and you can crash many times. So uh, yeah, so when when the driver came, he went to the driver, nodded with a finger, saying uh, you should be careful driving this guy. Safari walk is just right next to Nairobi. It's uh, four kilometers, which is very easily accessible by public transport or Boda Bodas. And um, you can see, you can graze around in a kind of like a big zoo with a big, bitter, bigger cage areas, but not as big. And you can see like a five different types of, 10 different types of animals. Total price for a foreigner was $22, while locals pay only $3. I'm on my way to another park, another heritage village where it shows all different types of uh, houses for ethnic communities in Kenya. So there is a first wife's hut and opposite of that you can find a second wife's hut. Let's take a look inside. Yeah, nice and simple. Fireplace, bench and the bed. So this is how the inside of your hut looks like. Mm, nice and simple. Also interesting fact that uh, a foreigner, some charity NGO wanted to introduce the... Uh, it, in, in order to save the wood, they wanted to introduce the fireplaces and they wanted to introduce uh, fireplaces run stove, electric stoves run by solar power. So basically people don't have to cut uh, wood and bring it back home and make fires they just can use a solar power which saves their time and it saves environment which is uh, two shots two birds with a single stone however uh, when NGO workers came back after a while they first found people still cooking them their food using a wood inside and they asked like why <laughs> uh, why do you do that one it takes much longer for you to collect wood and it also that for environment. The explanation was pretty clear. He said that uh, when you put a solar power stove, you have to cook it outside, which means uh, your neighbors can see that you're cooking, which means they draw by for food, uh, but there is not enough food for everybody. It also has a pretty complicated architecture. Let's go inside and check it out. So this is Maasai village, a legendary Maasai village, which their house is pretty distinct from uh, other ones. 
they live in an area where you can't really find uh, any much straws or in a dry dry savanna so uh, all the straws are used for cattle food I guess and uh, yeah, this is how it looks like no straws just uh, mud, mud uh, ceilings roofs and, uh, So market just starting. But the interesting fact is that uh, all the clothes here are in the night time. Uh, they, they're just locking their tents. And, but... get their produce from different areas. We have the people men like the brokers who bring the produce from different areas. Mm -hmm. Like uh, banana is gotten in Uganda. Uh, okay. And uh, we have like uh, tea from Nyeri. So mm -hmm. different areas they come together. Uh, and, uh, okay. So the, the retailers will buy from them. But here we get our produce in a very wholesale price. You can buy one item in a wholesale price. Like the onion. Here I was walking the market and we found a few places called hotel and it's quite weird to see a hotel in the middle of a market and I asked about it and it was that when um, British came they saw uh, they mar marked their places with a big big house with a restaurant in front of it they called it a hotel uh, restaurants hotels restaurant and that's why the name stick called the restaurant and hotel. Mm -hmm. And what we are doing, we are recycling waste. Okay. And the waste that we are recycling are mm -hmm. mainly domestic animal boats. Mm -hmm. We started this project 2006. Mm -hmm. First we see opportunity whereby people are feeding on meat and then throwing the bones away. Uh, yeah, yeah. Some of the bones were smelling and also they were harmful to our kids and their mm -hmm. place. We came with an idea to clean our environment by collecting the bones mm -hmm. and then making them into use. Mm -hmm. That is where we come with this project. Mm -hmm. We started by collecting, then cutting, shaping, mm -hmm. then we came out with beads like this one. Mm -hmm. And also some of them are uh, mainly spoons, some of them are air clips, mm -hmm. some of them are necklaces. So those are the things that we are making. Not from Nairobi, camel bones? Uh, they are from Nairobi. From Nairobi, camel? Yeah. Okay. We have our um, friends who are feeding on camel meat at yeah. the city. Then we go there, we buy. So, what's your name? Uh, Os. My name is Teresa. Teresa, nice to meet you. Hi, colleague. Ah, okay. Hello. Wakutane, Hello. Wakai, Wai Nyumba, Wakuwa na Kutane Mali. So Power Women Shop has uh, women who are HIV affected with AIDS. Mm -hmm. So before they met here, they were meeting in a place called Lea Toto, mm -hmm. where they take care of the children. Mm -hmm. Now that's where they met mm -hmm. together. Yes. 
Kibira means forest. It used to be Kibra meaning forest. It used to be like the Gong Forest. So in the Second World War in 1963, when the British left, they didn't have anything to give them because the Nubian collaborated with the British. So they left them this land and they used to live closer to the railway, near to the city centre. So when they left, they left them this land as a token of appreciation. Mm -hmm. Now people started moving from different rural areas to come to this place to settle to look for jobs and that's how they settled. But it was start, uh, in 1963 it was like camping like the Maasai, they just come and they feel like we'll go, we'll go. Now they thought like, ah, this place is cheaper and easy to live. So <laughs> now that's how people started living there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but this land, uh, historical belongs to the Nubian, but right now it belongs to the government. So the government and the Nubian, like normally fight for this land because historical is their land, like it's like their rural area, but. In the government policy, this is what it's a government land. So no one has the title deed on this place. You just have the people work like the Hope and Shine, the school project we have. We have already bought the place, but we don't have the title deed of the place. We just have the paper showing that we have the ones who bought that place. Yeah. So this railway, it works up to date. Mm -hmm. The railway. Yeah. It connects to Mombasa, to the left, to the right, mm -hmm. and to the left, Rent it if maybe you have a lot of guests inside your house and you don't have a bigger space, you can rent this place and you can use the bios, biogas to cook if you, if you don't mind the environment. Yeah, or at times when it's football season. You can uh, put your television there and people will come to see the, ma the match and they'll pay you. Because men, they like watching football where, where there's a lot of men. So that they can hear yeah, yeah, bed and stuff like that and make a lot of noise. Mm -hmm. So on the floor they had a t the public washroom. Mm -hmm. On the left side is for the ladies, the shower and the toilet for the ladies. On the right, the, to the toilet for the men and the showers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is one of the water points. Okay, so yeah. human poop yeah. produce a gas we use for a bio. Yeah. Okay. And you see the thin wires, so that's one of the illegal ones. Mm -hmm. yeah. One, two, three, smile. house can fit 8 to 12 people. 8 to 12 people? So why do they all sleep? So for the parents, they go for the bedroom area. Then the children, one can sleep, the little ones sleep on the couch. Mm -hmm. And this you connect to, then you can place the mattress. Depending on the number you have. So you can place one mattress, two mattress, depending. slums uh, Kibera to the cap to that city town which is like only 5k away but you can actually like see a skyscrapers huge buildings bustling a big city financial district life
National Railway Museum in Nairobi. There are quite a few trains around and I think it was started building in 1882 the railway and finished in a couple of years. The most people was locals didn't want to do it and uh, the most workers to build this one was about 4,000 Indians. Uh, contractors who came here, many of them died as well due to the uh, diseases and to weather conditions and the wild animals. But the railway was finally finished and the uh, imperialists can, could, could use the, could transport their goods from one side to another one, make a shipping cheaper and, uh, yeah, and contribute to the nation's uh, overall development. It is a rush, rush time in Nairobi. Uh, lots of gasoline in the air, uh, big traffic jams, and you see these poda podas, motorbike drivers, taxis driving on the sidewalk. So it's quite a few things you have to avoid here. So well, I'm protecting my backpack. <laughs> Walking next to the Bank of Kenya, and the interesting thing, they made a quite very interesting innovation. And a few decades ago, it wasn't a big pop popular thing to use banks, and people was not really using this, They're making their transfers and purchases. But Bank of Kenya made, uh, because of introduction of uh, mobile and uh, uh, mobile networks, they made an innovation that you could use mobile bank easily with your own uh, mobile phone which now like a few years years later made that Kenyans using more mobile banking than Europeans so which is a pretty very innovative solution when I was talking to locals about their use of uh, mobile banking they find it more easier friendly solution than their conventional banks uh, usually charge they have a big big charges and uh, they charge a lot and yes usually for a big maybe for a big business or people in suit in uh, shirts in this place to the American Embassy but in 1998 uh, August 7th of August was a big attack on it the truck came and uh, blasted so it eventually it killed like uh, over 250 people and 5,000 more were injured some of them permanently on top of Nairobi and the uh, yeah, views are pretty staggering all the financial district is behind me skyscrapers and uh, banks and you also can hear a uh, traditional drum music in the background which makes it pretty exotic and uh, interchange of different uh, cultures and different types of life about it it's quite a big uh, social difference on the one hand here you can see a skyscrapers but this morning on that other side just behind that park and the body yet, yet again the uh, rush hour in Europe is quite crazy these border borders you walk on the side walk and border border just pass you behind you at like a 30 kilometers an hour speed just another coming up look oh on a sidewalk fast again one more and everywhere and sometimes they're just behind you it's like you can't see them some sometimes you just go from a sidewalk jump straight to the street to let the passengers go pedestrians go and back to the sidewalk again so i'm just looking for your life <laughs> no no time to relax <laughs> so yeah look yeah a bit on another pathway, maybe a bit safer, I guess, this time.
for, exa for, for example, we have plenty of jobs. Uh, you can call me and we have lots of vacancies. So basically when you call them, uh, it's a big, big scam. So this is Nairobi Panorama.